Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Habita fillah Continue on in our study of the Qawaid al-Qubra Al-Qawaid al-Khamsa al-Qubra The five integral fiqh principles In the Qawaid al-Fiqiyah In the study, our introductory study of Qawaid al-Fiqiyah we reach the uh, fifth principle, which is Al-Ada Muhakkama, that the Urf or the Ada or the custom uh, has a place in the Sharia. This is the general meaning of that uh, concept as we're going to explore as we get into the Qaeda and talk about some of the other principles which stem from this Qaeda. And this Qaeda comes from several adilla from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. And from some of the evidence is the statement of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala when he says, Fi Kitabi al -Kareem, خُذِ الْعَفُوْ وَالْأَمْرِ بِالْعُرْفِ وَأَعْرَضَ لَلْجَاهِلِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فِي كِتَابِهِ الْكَرِيمِ And this is a talking about uh, Al-Qisas, about uh, retribution. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says And pardon, and pardon them, and do so out of goodness and be away from the jahileen. Be away from those who are ignorant. And Allah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabihi al-kareem, Al-wasiyyatu lil-walidayni wal-aqrabina bil-ma'roof haqqan ala al-muttaqeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabihi al-kareem, and he's talking about al-wasiyya, the wealth left over before the inheritance. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, that he makes a bequest to parents and next of kin according to reasonable manners. A reasonable manners here, the term reasonable manners comes from the Arabic al-ma'ruf. As we mentioned, wal aqrabina bil ma'ruf, haqqan al muttaqin which is a uh, right or a duty upon the muttaqin, on the righteous. So here the term ma'ruf, as we mentioned uh, in the qa'ida al-ada al-muhakkam, that uh, when we talk about al-ada, this means that which uh, is a tradition or custom or something that returns. Ada, yu'udu. You know, it's something that comes and it uh, is something that is regular. So here, when we talk about Al-Adam Muhakkam, we're talking about something which is the accepted custom or tradition or understanding. And in the ayat, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wal aqrabina bil ma'roof, that the, uh, the relatives with... Uh, the ma'roof, meaning in accordance with the urf. So urf is another uh, term in the Arabic language refer, referring to uh, custom, you know, that which is customary. So we see from this ayat and how this is evidence for this qa'ida or this principle, the shahidir, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not mention a specific amount. But rather, he subhanahu wa ta'ala said, a, what would be understood or we translate to mean a reasonable manner, in a, in a reasonable manner that you, you spend this wealth or you give this wealth away in a reasonable manner. What is a reasonable or what is spending in a reasonable way or reasonable manner, that goes back to the orf. That goes back to the particular culture or the, uh, the habit 
of a particular people or a particular tribe or among a particular family, what is known as ma'ruf, what is known by them, what is a known customary practice. So this is evidence for this qaida for that reason. And there are many things in the shar' that don't have tahdeed, that they don't have, uh, they, that they haven't been restricted, for example, to a specific amount or a specific distance. For example, traveling, when we talk about uh, traveling, we see that the scholars, they differ over the, what is the actual uh, distance or time frame for what is considered sefer, what is considered traveling. So how do you estimate what traveling is? If this madhab says this, this the Malikiya says, says this, uh, Shafi'iya says this, how do we know what is in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? This is not to negate all of those, but as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah uh, mentions and made tarjih or made what he felt was the uh, most correct uh, view, and I believe this is the view per perhaps of the uh, Malikiyah as well, is that it goes back to the Urf. It goes back to the Ada, as we mentioned. So meaning that when we talk about Sefer, and this is how I calculate traveling when I travel, I don't say, oh, it's 19 miles or it's so many kilometers or it's so much distance or I've been away for this many days, but rather I calculate traveling and consider myself a traveler in accordance with the custom of the people that I'm with. So for example, me living, I'm, I'm from a, a city called Seattle, Washington. So when I go from Seattle to maybe Eastern Washington, I consider myself a traveler because then I've maybe, according to the custom, most people would consider, hey, you're probably packing your bags, that's gonna take two hours. Or if I'm going a further uh, you know, distance or to a place that in accordance with the custom, people consider that traveling. So that's how I estimate, whereas others will use a specific uh, uh, amount, of, a specific mileage or a distance, uh, which is not necessarily specified and restricted in the shara. So instead, since Sefer is not completely restricted in the shara, that it's 19 miles or it's this amount of time or this or, or what have you, then it goes back to the orf. It goes back to the custom. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. So that's just one example out of many where we see this qaida come into play and we're going to talk about more uh, details in, re uh, in regards to this uh, shortly, bidnillah uh, ta'ala. And f there are many other um, examples and evidences for this qaida when it comes to talaq, you know, and 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 spending, you know, spending bi ma'ruf wal ihsan, you know, those are uh, general terms that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, stipulates. However, as far as a specific amount of what dictates ma'ruf or what dictates ihsan, what what does that mean to spend in in goodness or free them in kindness? Well. Or uh, when it comes to, uh, especially in, in spending, what does this constitute? So this goes back to the custom of that, uh, of, of the Muslims or the custom of that, that people. And it just depends, and we're going to talk about, again, some of those conditions for, for uh, when we're uh, implementing this qaida. Also, evidence for this qaida coming from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wa salam, is a statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the wife of Abi Sufyan radiallahu ta'ala anhuma uh, when she was complaining and she said he is stingy, he's stingy and he's not giving what is sufficient for me and our child. You know, for so the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Khudhi ma yakfika wa waladaka bil ma'roof. The Prophet ﷺ responded to her and said, Take what is sufficient for you and your child, Bil Ma'roof. He said, Bil Ma'roof. So, Bil Ma'roof uh, 
going back to what is according to the what is it what what is the the term that comes uh, from this or maruf comes from this term al orf al orf meaning the custom you know in what you know so this is uh, one way we can look at it spending in goodness in accordance to uh, what is uh, customary and so here the prophet والسلام, ordered her and advised her to take from his wealth without his knowing without asking him permission because he's not doing his duties that which is sufficient for her and her child uh, in accordance with the the custom what is customary and so that means there wasn't it wasn't that it was five dirhams or you need to take 25 dirhams or you need to take two dirhams or, or what have you but rather it was bil ma'ruf it was in accordance with what is customary to be able to suffice you and your child. So this uh, is also evidence for this qa'id. Another evidence from the shara' is the hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam uh, where he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said lil mamluk ta'amuhu wa kaswatuhu bil ma'ruf that for the slave, meaning the one who is owned, that his provisions of food and clothing is upon the owner, uh, is upon his owner, the slave owner, Bil Ma'roof. Again, the Prophet ﷺ did not uh, say that a slave has to have this much spent on him, but rather this goes back to the what is customary, or this went back to what was customary during the time of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. And there is many other evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And another way that the fuqaha the scholars of jurisprudence look at this uh, this qaida they say in al adata taj al hakaman li ithbat hukm shar'i that the ada or the uh, custom becomes a means of judgment in order to verify a sharia Ruling, so that's very important when we look at that. That gives us a, a further insight and understanding into this qaida. Again, that the ada, meaning the custom, is used as a means for deriving or a, uh, affirming a Sharia-based ruling. So again, if we go back to uh, many of the examples that required spending. We are, what that means is, for example, in the sense of the slave being owned by the master and the master being responsible for the food and the clothing of the slave. Then this, in order to make that Sharia ruling of how much and what that denotes, you go back to the Ada, you go back to the uh, the the what is customary so that means the custom is what makes and affirms that Sharia ruling which is how much you're spending upon the servant so I hope that that's that's clear but that should give us a little bit of additional insight into that uh, qaida and then the scholars they also mention uh, you know the many different ways of the using the terminology orf of what we're talking about when we talk about what is customary or what is a part of the custom uh there is orf uh amali or orf fa'li meaning there is practical customs for example a custom that the the a particular people or that muslims do a particular part of their uh uh, spe uh, specific uh, custom that they practice or maybe for example a specific type of clothing so one one example might be 
as far as the uh, the Muslim custom, when one is making Umrah, they mu uh, for the men, they must wear Ihram. So this Ihram is also, you could say, is a part of the Ada uh, of, the, uh, of the Muslim. This is uh, something which is specific and a specific custom that is customary to wear and also obligatory, but it's also, you could say it's customary as well. Uh, to wear. So this is the Ada Fa'liya. Then you have uh, what is known as the Ada Qawliya, you know, in accordance with uh, certain statements or sayings or alfav or uh, statements and how we, we understand things in accordance with certain statements that that can also return to the Urf. That can also be something which is uh, customary, and so this is uh, very important. And we're we're going to talk about something which is very important, and that has to do with the uh, how we determine what is a legitimate orf or a legitim uh, legitimate custom and what is not. Some of the conditions because that's very important. So that someone doesn't misunderstand uh, th this very important qaida. So again, this qaida, this uh, principle, uh, just to be give us a good tesor or a good um, image of the to to make this qaida clear for us. Be idnillah taala. Listen to this uh, definition of this qaida the of the general meaning of this qaida and that will hopefully uh emphasize the things we've already said and give us direction for the conditions for what is considered orf or what is uh, what is considered orf and what is orf that is considered and we'll, we'll talk about the meaning the difference in in that statement type so the qaida, the meaning of this qaida, turshid al qaida, in an shari' al hakim, ja'al al awaid, wal a'raf, mu'tabira, fi yurja ilayha, fi dabd, al maqadir, wal sifat alati lam yuhaddidaha al shari', wa kadalika fi tafsir al fad al mutakalimin, wa gayri dalika mimma lam yurid bihi. Nas shari walakin hal jamil awaid wal araf ma'tabara um en hunaka shurutin la budmin tuafiriha. This is very important and is very uh good and this also again it helps to synthesize this qaida I hope. So this qaida it shows this principle it shows that the uh you know the 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 that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the shari, the one who legislates, has made uh, customs and habits that are to be considered, meaning that we, we should recognize them, that are recognized uh, to return back to in order to give a criterion and specify measurements, those things which have not been measured or given uh, numerical value, if you will. For example, we just gave some examples of when it comes to spending. If you spend bil maruf, if you spend in righteousness or, you know, righteousness or going back to the custom, what does that mean? Well, the custom in the USA, depending on where you live in the USA, perhaps will even differ. Seattle, Washington is a very expensive place. You have very expensive, you have Microsoft, you have uh, Boeing, you have Amazon.com, so housing is very expensive. So Maruf there would perhaps be d very different than Maruf in Philadelphia, depending on where you live in Philadelphia. That the housing, the Maisha, the living standards is very different or compared to Addis Ababa, Ethiopia or Mogadishu, Somalia 
or Jakarta, Indonesia, or whatever the case may be, meaning that those customs uh, are different. And when you say to spend in Maruf, what does that mean for the one who has children in those places? What does that mean to spend, to have to spend money there? Or the one who has multiple families, a man who's married to more than one wife, he has one in Ethiopia and he has one in uh, Seattle and then he has one in uh, Jakarta, for example. What does that mean to spend in Ma'roof then? You know, because the living standards in Jakarta is not like uh, Ethiopia. Jakarta, is, I believe, is more expensive than Ethiopia. And the living standards in, obviously, in the U.S. in general is going to be more expensive than probably both those places, but definitely more, much more than Addis Ababa, probably three, four, five, six times more. So what you're spending and the division of your, your wealth spending in Ma'roof to clothe and house one family in Jakarta is going to differ quite a bit from clothing and uh, housing a family in Seattle, Washington. So I hope that that's a good uh, tesawar. So the, the Sharia gives us, going back to the, the Sharia, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us this uh, you know, allows for us to go back to the, to the Urf, to the Ada. So you go back in order to uh, give a, uh, a numerical uh, value, if you will, or a, to give us that criterion and the characteristics as, as we mentioned in the definition, was sifat alati lem yuhaddidaha ashare. And the characteristics of something which has not been specified in the Sharia or specified by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, meaning, if for example you clothe someone in ma'roof or that you should wear uh, malabis, as is one of the examples that is mentioned with this qaida. Libasta uh, shuhra, yeah, wearing clothing which is not uh, going to be clothing which is denoting fame or which will, goes against the the normal custom. For example, I recall a scenario. Once I was doing work in my apartment, I was painting, and I was in Medina. And I recall I went out. I was going to go out, actually I did go out to the store which was very close to my home and I wore like a t-shirt, kind of a tank top, you know, I was working, I had paint and I just went around the corner and I ran into a, a Talib al I'll never forget, uh, a brother from uh, Kosovo, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him and uh, we used to see each other in many durus and, and so on and so forth and he said to me, he said, you know, this is not... Uh, befitting of a, a, a Talib al -Ilm. You shouldn't uh, do that. This is not the custom here. You know, this is looked down upon. And I kind of almost took offense at that because I didn't really know at the time, but it, then it registered with me later, you know, that, that I should have more shyness in that place in Medina and a place also where there's so many students of knowledge and, you know, I was in the circles of students of knowledge and going, you know, going to Jerusalem and stuff like this. So it wouldn't be befitting. You know, this might be seen as shuhra, you know, wearing malabis, which is, or clothing, which is, uh, that is outside of the culture, you know, that, that gives cause, uh, calls attention or, uh, you know, malabis or clothing that would make a person, you know, I guess if you want to say fame or showing off or something like this. So, Again, uh, this is going back to the Ada. So he was pointing me out to go go to the Ada and show also that the Ada of what? He was talking about the Ada of the Talib al -Ilm. Because, hey, you're in Sheikh, uh, you know, Suleiman Rahali's daughters, you're in Sheikh Abayi's daughters. I see you in Sheikh, uh, you, know, you know, that's not the, the clothing befitting for the one who is blessed and favored to go to those durus. What, what are you doing? You know, that was, so that's the orf of the Talib al -Ilm, you know, in the Mashayikh. Okay, so there's different araf um, as was mentioned in the, the tarif that we mentioned. And so, uh, and then also in this definition, also in the tafsir al-fadh al meaning also going back to the ada or the custom when it comes to definitions, when it comes to defining terminologies. 
that going back to the the orf of the people speaking or of course if it's spelled out in the shar then you go back to the orf of the shar and i'm going to give another example i once i was in yemen and some of the the brothers they asked me there was a, a christian man he was actually a pastor who some of the yemenis they were not students of knowledge not uh, you know salafi and they were, uh, you know, hanging out with this guy and he was really influencing them. And he was actually a pastor, a minister, and he was learning some Arabic and he was uh, influencing the people. So some of the Shabab had heard about him and they said, you know, Khalid, you know, you speak English. Obviously, you're an American. So can you can you talk to this American guy? So we saw them sitting out having tea and we joined them. And then I sat and I talked with the guy and, and I found he was, you know, from Texas, okay? He was a southern draw, you know, I'm from the north, he's from the south. Also, the, you know, you have these other elements there as well with regards to race and so forth. But anyway, we, we, we had a discussion. And then it turns out he was a minister of some sort. And he knew some Arabic. And I remember he mentioned about the... Uh, about the, uh, it had to do with the Musafir, Ibn Sabil. Ibn Sabil, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran. Ibn Sabil, okay? He said that this means son of the road. And, you know, he was had this distorted picture, and I said, subhanAllah, you don't really know Arabic competently. It has a, you know, you've given a very literal translation. That's not what it means. You know, it means the traveler, okay? That's what it means, Ibn Sabil. You know, it's a reference for traveler, and that comes to knowing the ada and the orf of the language, of how the Arabs use that, Ibn Sabil. How do they use that terminology? You know, how is it used as a Sharia term as well? So, this goes back to the orf, either the orf of, well, the orf of the shar in, uh, in that situation. Also, the orf of the Arabs, even before the revelation of the Quran to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, before his prophethood, they probably used the term Ibn Sabil, it was known from the Arabs to be a term which uh, refers to traveling. So this man was adamant about that and we got into a discussion and the fact that he was so adamant I had to kind of straighten him so I, I became angry and I said, listen, no you don't know what you're talking about. He calmed down a little bit, he backed up, but the point was because he wasn't making his judgment and his understanding based on the shutter, he was adamant about battle and his Akhta, his mistakes, so he needed to be checked. And that checking came from the shari, it came from the uh, going back to the Sharia based definition. So, those that had to really that relates to what we we're just talking about al fav about the you know the al fav and the mutakalimin, not the mutakalimin ahl al the, the people of, of Kalam. That's not what we're talking about. Well, here we're talking about the al fav of the people speaking, you know, going back to the either the custom of the people or going back to the uh, the al-fad of the shara, first and foremost. And so it's very important. Another example, and just in order to drive this home, and it, it's just coming to mind, is also uh, sometimes when we hear, especially when it comes to translating, that's why we want to be careful about uh, making rulings on people and so on and so forth, uh, you know, about things that if you translate, you might understand one way, but the way of that, in the context of how the people use that, it is not meant as far as the little translation. So sometimes you see, and you see this problem that people will take things to the scholars, and really they're taken out of context, sometimes to refute other people. But even if they literally, because they literally translated what someone said, Sheikh, we have this person, he said this, Da, 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 da. So they've t told the sheikh in Arabic what it means, but even in the context in English of what this person was saying, it doesn't, that is not the correct meaning. You've taken a little translation for something which in according in the context of the way the person was using it or in the, the meaning behind it is not the literal meaning. So this is going back to the orf of the, the speaker, not the orf of just a literal translation and now you've gotten a sh the sheikh to make a pr pronouncement of takfir on the person or that the person's a major sinner because they said such and such but in fact it has a totally different meaning 
uh, in, in the context of the way the person was using it. So it's very important uh, when something as is implicit uh, or is uh, explicit, you know, described in this definition, was sifat alati lem yuhaddidha ashari. These are sifat, or these are characteristics in the language or in uh, things in the sh in in the Quran or the Sunnah which have not been specified in detail as far as w weights and measures or the characteristics of 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 something. So then you go back to the orf because it wasn't explicit in the shirt. Okay, so I hope that that uh, is something that gives us uh, a little bit of uh, clarification. And then we go to, I'm going to mention just some of the conditions. So some of the conditions for going to the orf, especially when we're talking about the orf outside the shirt, meaning the orf, the custom of a particular people or a particular country or nation or whatever the case may be that is not Islamic or not um uh, because or it's not Islamic because a lot of people think, you know, oh, you know, now, now I'm Muslim, let's throw everything away that, you know, that I had as a life before or my understandings before. No, that's not the case. But we throw away those things that contradict the, the shirt, that go against the shirt. OK, so that's very, very important for us to understand, especially when given dawah and in other things is to look at. Uh, these things and have some idea about these koaid and principles and these conditions. So one of the uh, sharut, one of the conditions with regards to uh, using uh, customs or something that's customary for the sharia based hukum, for a sharia ruling, is that first and foremost is that the custom or the habit does not contradict the nusus, the text, the textual evidence. It doesn't contradict the Quran and the Sunnah. That's very important. So, for example, we don't say, you know, uh, you know, from our custom is perhaps, uh, you know, maybe a particular culture. They really, especially some particular European cultures, they drink alcohol like crazy, I think, in the Irish and, and others. So you don't say, just because you're an Irish Muslim, you don't say, well, our custom uh, in Jahili or whatever, you, what have you, is that we uh, drank tons of beer. So that's our custom and, you know, that's okay for us or whatever. No, that is contradicting that ada, that custom of drinking alcohol goes against direct textual evidence. The Quran and the Sunnah, which prohibits intoxicants and, and alcoholic drinks and getting uh, drunk and high and so on and so forth. So that goes against the shirt. So that orf, that orf, we don't even consider that. That's, that's out. So any custom which goes against, again, very important, it goes against, it contradicts, then that is out the door already. Another condition for an ada or a, a custom is that also the ada needs to be related to what is uh, 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 you know, what is the uh, consistently majority of the cases or majority of the situation. So, for example, you don't go to some customary understanding or customary uh, figure, which is only, which is not really, uh, you know, for majority of the people or majority of the people of that custom and then make a hukum based upon that. But rather you go to that which is mostly used and mostly understood as being the uh, custom. Uh, another condition, which is uh, very uh, important with regards to this, and I'll mention this as the last one. There are some others that the uh, scholars mention, but this last one, just to give us an idea, is that that ada that is being judged with, it should not result in bid'ah. It should not result in bid'ah, in, in changing the religion. So you, now you're trying to make some condition because it didn't seem like it was spelled out in the shara, that it should now be, uh, and it's going to change the ibadat. No change the, the acts of worship. So that's another condition is that Adah should not change the shara. 
It should not contradict it, and it should not add to it, and it should not take away from it. Okay, it should not do do something that's going to be a bid'a, and especially that's going to be the case. Especially what's going to be the most clear is when it comes to aqidah, when it comes to creed, uh, because this is tokefiya. This is our, our creed, our etiqad, uh, our belief is something we we just make taslim and usus. We don't, um, you know, there's not going to be a new uh, creed that's going to come about now or never. It is the creed has already been defined in the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. It's not like issues of fiqh and ijtihadat. You know, there's not going to be an ijtihadat regarding the ittiqad, uh, regarding creed. There's not going to be these juristic um, uh, new understandings and and altering the 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 text. You can't play with the text. However, uh, with regards to fiqh issues, there's going to be fiqh and nawaza. There's going to be new contemporary issues and new contemporary technologies that need a sharia hukum, that need to be understood in the context of the sharia, how we can practice. Is it halal? Is it haram? Is it mubah? Is it, you know, what, what is the hukum regarding such and such new practice? And so those are just some of the conditions that we need to have some sort of Understanding and again, the orf we, we mentioned that it can be amali and it can be fa'li, it can be uh, or it can be amali and it can be qoli, you know, it can be according uh, customary as far as pract customary practice or customary statements, you know, what is the custom as far as the statements. Uh, and it's very important that also, along with that, whether it's a specific custom or it's the custom of a society or a particular people. Those are all, they all can be, fit under that ada muhakkam. You know, they can fit under this principle. It just depends on the, the scenario. And we're going to give you some scenarios as, uh, in the, you know, to, to give us further insight. Uh, another important aspect, and this really goes back to one of the conditions, is that the urf uh, needs to be a sahih, a sound urf. You know, it can't be an urf facet, you know, something that has wickedness and and evil because it contradicts the shara right off the bat and so i i believe that's clear some of the ways that we can see or some examples we can see uh in which this uh this kaida uh is implemented aside from some of the examples we spoke about one way is for, as regarding uh dawah when giving dawah in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that means, for example, that uh, a da'i, someone calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that they should have wisdom and they should and the da'i should strive to know the under to know the people they're giving da'wah to and understand their custom and their background. So a lot of people they don't they don't think about this, they don't consider this. But this is very important and is mentioned. Uh, by some of the scholars with regards to that, that this is part of giving dawah is knowing, not just knowing what you're calling to, the dawah, you know, that you're, you're calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that means you need knowledge, and that you're also calling, you have knowledge, you have knowledge as a da'i, also of the people you're calling. So calling, you know what you're calling to, and you know the, you have an idea about the people you are calling, uh, you know, their customary background. So, for example, if a person were to go, for example, uh, a, a person who maybe is Palestinian, for example, let's just think of it, an example, a sheikh or a talib al uh who's directly from Palestine. This is a, just an example. Or what have you, they don't have to be directly from Palestine, whatever the case may be, and they go to a predominantly African American community. And this is a community in which the people, they're, they're uh, uh, people of mixed financial ability, meaning you have people of, uh, who have uh, limited means, and then you have people who are wealthy in the community, for example. 
and this person goes, but they have no idea about the people. They just were told, hey, go give a lecture uh, to these people. And they don't know how to uh, synthesize the information to those people. Then this, this can be a problem. This is a problem and is problematic for the maqasid of the da'wah. The da'wah is to call the people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's to raise the people. But if you don't know anything about those people, you can't speak the language, you can't give them anything, uh, offer them something because they don't understand you or you, do, you're not relating to them at all. You're, you're totally away from what they are accustomed to. Then this can be a problem and this defeats some of the intent of da'wah. Likewise, someone going to a community that's predominantly of a wealthy community of engineers and so forth, and the person going to them has no idea about the social and economic background of that community. They were told to give a dawah, and they're given dawah about something, and maybe the people in that community are not strong in practice. They pray, but they don't know about certain issues. And then the person, the die goes and starts talking about issues the people have no idea about, or the people don't need to know about. Then this again is a showing a lack of hikmah and wisdom on the die's part, and that they are not applying this qa'ida, this, qa this principle of using the wisdom uh, of the shara and understanding the custom of the people that they are calling. So it's very important to have that, uh, to have some met. That does not mean that you're African American, you can only call African Americans. Or you're wealthy, you're a wealthy African American, you can only call wealthy African Americans. Or you can only call people to this or, or that. Or you're Pakistani, you can only. No, that has, this is not what we're saying. We're saying that you need knowledge of what you're calling to, which is the book and the sunnah, and you need knowledge of the people that you're calling to in order to relate and in order to help them uh, better themselves and, and come to the book and the sunnah and learn. Another example, which is also related, and this is also related to dawah, is that the, uh, the da'i should have an idea about some of the negative issues that that particular uh, culture or people that they are addressing that they face. If they have no idea about the, 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 the customs and the problems that and the negative customs those people have perhaps in that community, then they will be uh, unlikely to be prepared to help them address those issues. So this is very important, again, knowing the people and also knowing their issues. And this comes from going to the Ada. It comes from going to the customs and having an understanding of the customs, you, the people you're calling. Likewise, another example, which all of these examples are very close is, and, and, and I'm just pointing this out because we do see a, a lot of problems with this, and I, we've seen whole communities. One particular incident, uh, a particular scholar, that he was asked a fatwa uh, about uh, 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 an individual who had people flocking to him, uh, you know, and he was calling in general to the book and the sunnah, but he had some bid'ah, he had some mistakes, he had some hezbiya. However, that alam that was asked, you know, by the people needed really more insight to those, uh, that community because the harm of destroying that individual's reputation caused a whole, a huge vacuum and a whole community was more or less destroyed and many people's lives were affected, their livelihood and their uh, their practice. Some of the people left Islam. Some people were very famous. Muevin becomes a, a rap star, a rapper, and a singer. Uh, women that were known, at least covering and striving, that they became, you know, uh, involved in wickedness and even leaving the religion. Many people left, even some leaving the religion. Why? This is also looking, going back to some of those other Kawai, the Masada and the Mufasid. So even the scholars, they need to have knowledge and background about the 
people that they are making fatwa for, you know, and the things that they face. And this goes to another qaida that we often mention. A hukm ala shay farin ala tasawwarihi. That the ruling on something, part of the ruling uh, on something, or part of giving a ruling is that you have a correct picture of it. You have a correct image. So if someone gives you half an image, half a, 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 a part of a scenario about an individual, for example, Sheikh, we have a person, he does this and he does this. And then the Sheikh says, ah, oh, that's battle. That, that person is a mubtadiyah. They're like this, 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 okay? But they didn't give a good tasawwur. Oh, by the way, Sheikh, this is the only Muslims in this whole state, for example. And it's one masjid. And he's the only one calling to Allah. And he also has some ilm and he has some good. Should we treat him in the same way we would treat someone who there's other alternatives and so on and so forth? And that it's not going to cause the people in mass to leave Islam. So this is what I mean. That you have to have a good, present a good uh, picture of the scenario. And that the sheikh should have those good uh, pictures of, of what's going on. And a full truthful picture before making a hukum. Before making a ruling. Because there could be more uh, harm than good by a particular fatwa and we've seen this happen countless times where people have tried and have succeeded in destroying the reputation of du'at and communities and the mafasid. So that also goes back to this guy that we're talking about al-ada muhakkam that you need to have an idea about the the custom of a people and that we sometimes return back to the custom if we do not have a specific clear for example, uh, detailed uh, information in the shirk for something. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Thus ends our brief introduction of these uh, five uh, principles, Qa'id al-Kubra, that are accepted in the, with the madahib. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it a source of benefit and not a source of harm. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.